welcome to Syncast Powered by Commercial. I'm Heath McKnight. Uh, joining me today is Jack Cooper Smith, who works for HubSpot. And I'm really excited uh, to have you on today, Jack. And Jack, uh, first of all, tell me a little bit about yourself and, and your title. I was looking at it. Uh, it. It's very impressive, but I may have to defer to you uh, uh, to tell me about what, what you're doing and everything at HubSpot. Well, first of all, he thank you so much for having me. It's been great working with you and the rest of the commercial team uh, as thank we've you. worked together over the past months, maybe yeah. even years at this yeah, point. Yeah, probably. <laughs> uh, yeah, but yeah, thanks for having me here today. Hope you're having a great uh, week so far, of course. Yeah. So I do indeed work at HubSpot. I'm a little biased, of course, but I do think I have the coolest job at HubSpot. My title is indeed a little bit of a mouthful. I am the commerce go-to-market and onboarding manager here at HubSpot. So I work on the Commerce Hub team, obviously something we'll be chatting about here today. It is HubSpot's yeah. newest product line that we announced at Inbound of 2023. I know we'll get into the nitty gritty of everything, but the way that I think about my current role is I really sit between our product managers and our engineers and the rest of the planet. So other HubSpotters, other partners of ours, our direct customers, and I want to make sure people know about the benefits of Commerce Hub. I want to help them adopt the tools and use them as effectively as possible. And I also want to make sure that I take everyone's feedback, pass it along to the team so that as we do continue to grow, we grow in the direction that our customers actually want us to grow in. And so at a very high level, that's my role. I've been at HubSpot for about seven years here. I know we'll talk mm. about my journey and how I landed here, but I've had an interesting road. I absolutely love HubSpot. The product has grown a tremendous amount. I honestly still think, to use a baseball analogy, we're in the second or third inning as a company. And oh, I'm wow. personally, as a product line, probably in like the first or second inning. So we have a lot more work to do. And I'm excited to have you and the commercial team and really anyone else listening to this involved in all that work long into the future. That's awesome. That That's really incredible. And I love that analogy. And of course, if you had asked me, I'd say, oh, come on now, they got to they got to be in the, the bottom of the seventh, I would think. But I love that because you're thinking constantly, HubSpot, you know, thinking constantly about the future and everything. And, and I, I want to dive into that in, in a little bit. Um, just a little bit more about, about you. Um, what in your background um, that, you know, going back even before HubSpot and also in HubSpot that has helped you uh, in your career in creating go-to-market strategies, and also um, how have you grown in the seven years in, in your roles at HubSpot? Um, so I know that's two different questions, but uh, I think I think go-to-market, that's something that it, 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 people say, well, what is this word? What does this mean? And what is the importance for me? And I was wondering if you could talk about your background with go-to-market and then a little bit more about you know your journey through HubSpot. Sure. Yeah. Great question. Great way to kick it off. So uh, I'll, I'll start out with you know a little bit about myself and then dig a little bit into the professional side of things. So I grew up right outside Washington, D.C. in Alexandria, Virginia. Mm -hmm. So I know that you mentioned, Heath, that you're a Miami sports fan. I am definitely yeah. a Washington sports fan, despite the fact that I live in uh, Boston now. Yeah. And growing up in that in the D.C. area, politics in the federal government just cast a very large shadow. So I've always been super interested in the world around me, how governments work. I'm sure this isn't where you thought we were going here, but I've been oh, just cool. like very interested in the broader like political landscape. I also, when I was young, wanted to learn languages and travel. So I learned Spanish working in restaurants. I lived in China for a few years. Wow. And I always wanted to just like be exposed to things that I had never really seen before. And that made me like kind of uncomfortable, I think. And I guess like looking back and doing a little self-reflection, I think I'm a pretty darn curious person. And when it comes to go-to-market strategies as a whole, I think being curious and always trying to be learning and implementing new things is something that I learned pretty young and is maybe like inherent to my nature mm -hmm. that I think has translated relatively well to my career. And obviously I hope that that continues to be the case. So uh, about my road at HubSpot and how I landed where I am right now, uh, I started on our customer support team about seven, almost exactly seven years ago, actually wow. seven years ago in about two weeks. Uh, and customer support is a hard job for any yeah. former support reps or current support reps listening. Uh, good for you, because that is an absolutely <laughs> very difficult uh, rip, uh, oh, role. Yeah. 
But at the same time, you really understand our product and you really understand our customer. What makes them mad? What don't they like? Where are our shortfalls? So I feel like I came in at HubSpot. And while I did start very much in the trenches, I understood our customer and I really understood our product. And I Mm. genuinely think if you're going to be an efficient go-to-market rep at a given company, you really need to understand your product. So I think product knowledge is absolutely essential. And I still talk to customers pretty much every single day, mostly, frankly, out of selfish reasons, because Mm. I want to make sure I stay super close to the customer and super close to our product. So I did customer support for a year. And then from there, I joined an experimental team when HubSpot was trying to figure out our freemium strategy. So Mm. I'm sure, as many of you all know, we have a free CRM that is incredibly powerful. But when we first launched that, we were like, okay, we have this free CRM. We have a lot of people using it. How do we get them to pay us, though? (laughs) And so HubSpot has always done whenever we have this idea and we know we want to implement it, but we don't exactly know how, we throw some humans at the front line and say, hey, can you speak to a bunch of customers and figure out what's going on here? And then once they do, they can implement that knowledge, scale it, pull those humans back a little bit, and then rinse and repeat. And so I started on our freemium team on one of those just experimental motions for us. It ended up going pretty well. From there, I joined another premium team, or excuse me, experimental team, this time in our sales organization. And that was really expanding on that role of like talking to customers. We got into webinars. We got into the chat channel on the HubSpot website. So we expanded there. I then moved back to our customer success organization and stood up a, what was at the time called new user experience team. So any new user comes into HubSpot. HubSpot is a big system. There's quite a bit to learn. I'm not going to lie here. And so we would help those folks really via automation more than anything, but also, of course, talking to those customers, adopt the tool and learn more about it and learn how their business is actually using it as they come into their business. I then stood up a one-to-many onboarding function. So essentially, how can we onboard our customers at scale and more efficiently while also still, of course, providing them the value that they need? And then I joined the Commerce Hub team two years ago now uh, and joined product. I've also spent some time in marketing. So I've had an interesting role, happy to dig into like anything specific there. I do think though, Heath, I'm the first and only HubSpotter that's ever been in our marketing, sales, customer success, and product organizations. Yeah. So I've jumped around a lot. I've had, <laughs> I've had a cool road here. That That's awesome. And, and I think probably, at least for me, my impression is, is that having all of that just makes it easier for you to, to help, like you were saying, de- develop the products and, and having that ear uh, still with the customers, I think is key. Um, I've heard from more than one person, not only in, in my role at commercial, but I, I'd mentioned earlier, but prior to this many years ago, I was in film and video and I, I, you know, dealt with a lot of film and video software, like editing software. And it's when the, the developers are listening to their customers and making the product, not only powerful, but easy to use. That's when it works when they're just like, you know what, I'm going to just put in whatever I think the customer wants. And unless your name is Steve jobs, you know, you're probably not going to, it's not going to go well. And I just, I got to say that that's incredible. And it, and it, and it, and to be able to just continue to have that pulse on what the customer is feeling and thinking. And as you said, what they were mad about, and you turn that into the positive of, okay, what can we do to make this something that they'll love? And, you know, hopefully the complaints go down and everything. So that's incredible. Um, And a great segue about Commerce Hub. Let's, let's talk about this. You said it was, it's brand new, not even what, two months ago, it was uh, unveiled at inbound and and I'm really excited to talk about this and learn more about Commerce Hub. I'm of course a little biased, but it is absolutely <laughs> the coolest product line that HubSpot has. Mm-hmm. So Commerce Hub was indeed announced at inbound 2023, so mm-hmm. uh, September of 2023. HubSpot payments though has been a feature that we've had since about 2021. So that's why I say I've been on this team for as long as I have, despite the fact that the product line is pretty new. Now, what's the difference between HubSpot Payments and Commerce Hub? Honestly, HubSpot Payments is a part of Commerce Hub. As we've grown the product line, though, 
the market kind of perceived HubSpot payments as just a little add-on to HubSpot that you could mm -hmm. leverage. It is so much more than that. You can really power your entire commerce process. And with that, your entire go-to-market motion all from within HubSpot. And so mm -hmm. as the tools expanded, as we added more processor choice so that you can use platforms like Stripe now and plug that right in, yeah. We thought that it was time to package things up and really tell the market as a whole, like, no, it's a very serious set of tools, not just a little add-on that's on the sideline of the HubSpot ecosystem, for example. So this is one of the top priorities for the entire HubSpot company, uh, and I'm really excited to see the impact that it's been having on our customers. Now, I'm happy to get into the nitty-gritty of how absolutely everything works, but at a high level... Commerce Hub is all about being able to manage your commerce process within HubSpot. Ultimately, you're managing all of your customers within your CRM, mm -hmm. and there's no need to build those exact same customers in a completely separate system. Ooh. And so we want to bring these two together, and we want to allow for you all to get paid faster, increase your revenue, and save time. Those are the three use cases that we're very much focused on. So mm -hmm. as we continue to build tools and iterate on our current tools, that's what we're always asking ourselves is like, how can this help a given customer of ours save time, make more money? How can mm -hmm. they get paid faster? So that's really what we're after. And ultimately, I think that all of those firms that have been running their commerce process out of the back corner of their of the back office, mm -hmm. I think that is a 20th century way of thinking about things. And these two systems really do need to come together, your commerce and your CRM ecosystems, mm -hmm. in order to really move your business forward. We're almost, you know, a quarter of the way through the century at this point, and oh. uh, it's time for businesses to really embrace like the online go-to-market. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, uh, at a high level, that's what we're all about, um, awesome. and those are the questions that we ask ourselves as we build tools. Gotcha. Now, um, before before I dive into an, another question about Commerce Hub, I think one thing I that pops into my mind is I know that it doesn't matter the industry, it doesn't matter. Uh, probably even the business size. Um, but what would be kind of like a, a typical use case for a, a company? You know, I'll just use a, a small example. Maybe they are selling, you know, uh, products that that they manufacture. So they're manufacturer, but they're more like they they do their sales to their to their B2B and everything. How will Commerce Hub help them out specifically? And we the HubSpot CRM, they're managing their customers and everything. It does a great job. But tell me a little bit more about how the Commerce Hub will help them out versus, as you said, this 20th century, you know, diving into an old system and trying to do things that way. Um, how, how will this help them out? Totally. I'd love to drill into a specific use case here, Heath, and then maybe I can zoom out a little bit and chat about like what are those industries and those types of, of, of companies that are seeing the most value out of hubs, out of Commerce Hub? Because mm -hmm. frankly, we are not trying to solve for absolutely everything. We cover a lot of surface area and can do a bit. We mm -hmm. have some omissions though, and I'll be very transparent about those omissions. Okay. Let's take the manufacturing use case though first, because frankly, that's something that we see quite a bit. So let's say you're selling a, a big machine B2B. Yeah. First of all, did you realize, Heath, that 40% of B2B transactions now, now, not like way back when, are via paper check? Like, I don't know, like I've had the same paper, this is a story, I, not a, a quick anecdote I tell all the time. Oh. When I was 12 years old, my mom took me to the bank to like open a savings account for me or a mm -hmm. checking account. I yeah. have the exact same checkbook that I got when I was 12 years old getting walked because I just don't use paper checks. That is something that yeah. is. I didn't even problem. order them. I didn't, I got a new bank and I didn't, they're like, do you want to order checks? I'm like, no, because no, I, rather I, not. I, I yeah. don't have to. Nearly half of B2B transactions though, people are still waiting on FedEx, UPS or the USPS to deliver it. And so there's so many inefficiencies just right there that we can solve. Mm -hmm. So drilling into the manufacturing use case, let's say you're selling another business, this big machine, if you're not using Commerce Hub or if you are using paper checks, for example, I imagine that there's going to be a decent amount of marketing that your business needs to do so that 
you know, your buyers are aware of the product or the service that in this case, the product that you're selling. Mm -hmm. And then if it's a high ticket item, I'm sure there's a decent amount of back and forth with a given sales rep on your team in order to close that deal. So you're managing all of that within HubSpot. You're following up, you're leaning into our automation, you're putting the word out for your brand online using our systems. But then when they're like, okay, it's time to pay you, which is arguably the most important part of the process. Yeah. What folks are often doing is they're knocking on the door of their finance team saying, hey, folks, can you create an invoice from your accounting system and send that out? And then yeah. a few days later, maybe that sales rep is like, hey, folks, did you end up sending that invoice? Ah, I was on vacation. Sorry. Let me send it out now. And then a few days later, hey, did they actually pay the invoice? Where do we stand? And so there's just so much inefficiency at that point of sale, which I would again argue is the most important part of the customer journey. Mm -hmm. And so if you use Commerce Hub, you're able to simply create that invoice from exactly where you're working, the contact company or deal record, send out that invoice. You can create invoice workflows, for example, to maybe notify yourself two days after if uh, the invoice is due, if it's not paid. And then after five days, maybe you want to send the invoice again to the buyer or maybe even send them a text message saying, hey, this invoice is sitting on the shelf. And so that's just like one use case that we can have. And it just makes teams so much more efficient. And oh, again, yeah. paid faster and save time are those two use cases right there. So mm -hmm. that's that manufacturing use case. But frankly, so many businesses, especially on the B2B side of things, we'll see those same efficiencies every single day. Gotcha. I mean, it could be even just a service, you know, we, we just provide uh, technical support. You bought a computer and maybe you didn't want to go with the manufacturers. You need somebody locally. I could see that where they are, you know, they're handing a check over, which is again, it's hard to believe, but it, it is true. You're right. I, I have a friend that he, he does a lot of um, service work marketing. That's kind of where that, uh, that, that example came from and he still gets checks, but uh, everybody else seems to be doing, doing the, the other way, but at least he knows where everything's going versus, Hey, like you said, did you send that invoice out? Did you, did, did they pay us? And then depending on so many other people, things fall by the wayside. And yeah, I, I totally, things. I totally understand Important that. Things yeah. too. Important yeah. thing. We're on a mission and, to kill the paper check in a lot of yeah. ways. And also <laughs> the amount of CFOs I've connected with over the years that's been like hours every Monday or hours every Friday, just sifting through a spreadsheet being like, oh, oh. that's an unpaid invoice. It just should be so much easier yeah. to talk to businesses that are like, okay, we're going to do this big website build. And then three, four weeks in, they're like, wait, we're having ca unexpected cash flow issues. What's up with this? Oh, they never paid that invoice and we're 75% of the way through the work right now. And so, um, so many inefficiencies here. And yeah. I don't know about you, you, Heath, but I feel like so many folks are not necessarily focusing on this specific part of their go-to-market, of their customer's journey. Mm -hmm. And so it's something I, I would encourage anyone listening to this to really like further audit because I'm sure there are inefficiencies that may have just been kind of sailing for years and you've been focusing on other things. And this is really the underpinning of your business. Yeah. I'd encourage everyone who hasn't thought about it recently to do a little bit of a commerce process audit to see where you could be more efficient. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. You know, we talk a lot about um, on Syncast um, about digital transformation, occasionally about like a new ERP, but most of the time it's like, okay, we got to get you off the spreadsheets. We got to get you off of the whatever manual process they were doing to try to manage their customers and get you into a CRM. And in this case, this is more about the finance side. This is the back room, the, the, the back office, the digital transformation of that. So I, you know, I just, I guess I just don't consider it because I'm in the marketing department and everything, mm -hmm. but yeah, I, I would hate to be 75% through any kind of a project. And, and you realize that, that, that they haven't sent out an invoice and where's our 50% deposit. We started work on it. And then that just, it's the silos. It's, it's the, because you're not controlling a little bit more like you can obviously with commerce hub and everything. Um, I guess uh, real quick now got commerce hub going, sent out my invoice. They sent the payment. 
what happens after that as far as the commerce hub and everything um tying that into other you know time to start manufacturing etc cetera, etc cetera. Uh, frankly, that is the exact question I was hoping you would ask here. <laughs> so thanks, yeah. thanks for leading me down that road. Mm -hmm. So yes, we have a quotes tool that you can use to get paid on. We have an invoice tool. We have a tool called Payment Links as well. So if you haven't considered touchless sales on your website, mm -hmm. absolutely consider doing so. I've seen divorce lawyers selling their services online touchlessly. So wow. if, you're, if you're sitting here listening, being like, Oh, no, 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 everything that I sell has to go through a sales rep. I respectfully very much disagree with you. Yeah. I encourage you to reconsider that. Now, yeah. yes, we have a payment links, quotes, and invoice tool that you can use to get paid. There are a lot of those out there in the market. It's what happens afterwards that really is where Commerce Hub becomes a lot more powerful. Mm -hmm. So CRM objects. I imagine a lot of listeners here are at least somewhat familiar with the HubSpot CRM or just CRMs in general. Mm -hmm. The way that we're building commerce into the HubSpot CRM is we are literally just creating CRM objects. That is it. So we have the payment object, which represents a transaction. Anytime you run a recurring payment, a subscription record is created automatically. Start date, end date, number of expected and completed payments, ARR, MRR, things like that live on the subscription mm. record. And then invoices are both a channel to get paid. They're also a record of payment as well. So things like status, balance due, due date, invoice number, things like that. And I'm sure we'll chat more about invoices, especially through the lens of ERP and accounting integrations. Yeah. So it's those three objects that look and feel literally like every other object within HubSpot. So there's a lot of benefit just from a user interface perspective. So that sales rep who's wondering, hey, did that invoice get out? Did that invoice get paid? Peek to the right of the company contact or deal record in that right sidebar, and you will answer your question in a oh. millisecond. Now, it's not just the user interface, though, that these objects bring. It's also what we internally call the HubSpot framework. Maybe I'm nerding out a little too much here. <laughs> but the HubSpot framework is things like workflows. So when you create an automation set, the first thing that you decide is what is the center of gravity? Is it a contact-based workflow? Is it a company-based workflow? Well, if you wanted to create a payment-based workflow or a subscription-based workflow for renewal management, invoice-based workflow for that follow-up, you can absolutely do so. So that brings a phenomenal amount of, of efficiencies with it. Same thing goes for custom reporting. Same thing goes for list segmentation. Create a list of your active, so active subscribers. Couldn't be easier. And that's frankly where our tools separate out from others in the market. It's that really deep CRM integration with the mm. power of HubSpot's pipes underneath everything. Yeah. That's what separates us from the QuickBooks, from the Stripes, from all of the other players in this space. Yeah, I understand. And and but it would be if it wasn't there with that integration, the those efficiencies that you're getting with your back office would kind of go out the window with your front office because then you're typing in all of that stuff into the CRM. And so you have that kind of integrated. And thankfully, because I just started thinking, boy, that could that could whatever efficiencies you were just saving on this side, the back office, now it's like your, your sales team are, wait a second, I have to put that. So that that's, that's pretty incredible. Um, I, I do want to talk a little bit more about like the marketing side of how, how you are, are going to market with this, but want to just talk about uh, something else related to this. Uh, and you had mentioned it ERP. So when I'm hearing commerce hub and I'm talking, you're talking about, you know, invoices, payments and subscriptions and everything. Some of those things I think of an ERP or even just a, a standard accounting software. Um, is Commerce Hub going to replace those software systems? Or, and I think I already know the answer to this based on what you just said, will it enhance the ERP or accounting software that a business is using? Enhance, yes. Replace, no. Integrate is likely the direction that we'll move in. Mm -hmm. I certainly don't have the HubSpot crystal ball, but I do stay close enough to the rest of the company to be pretty confident in saying, I don't think HubSpot's going to be building into what we consider the back office yeah. in the next 
long time. I may look yeah. back on this and, you know, eat these words, but I really <laughs> don't see HubSpot playing in the back office space. Rather, I see us integrating with this space. What does that look like? So we, of course, have built and will continue to build deeper accounting integrations because, well, yes, we want to improve your front office's workflow, small w, and all of the efficiencies that we can bring there. We don't want to make your back office super upset either. We want to make Ooh. every single person at your company as happy and efficient as possible. If you all can close your computer a little bit early each day and spend more time with your family, that would put a giant, giant, giant smile on my face. And so we're going to continue to lean into the QuickBooks Online integration, for example. Mm -hmm. Now, there are a lot of ERPs out there. There are oh, a yeah. lot of accounting integrations out there. And Heath, I know both of us are in the United States, but the landscape internationally is even more complex than oh, this landscape oh, in the U.S. Yeah. Look, it sounds like you agree. So I mentioned we have CRM objects for our commerce data. Another part of objects are APIs. That's something that our team is thinking a lot about as we move into 2024. And so while I don't have an announcement here, I wouldn't be shocked if we started to open up our commerce APIs further. And once we do that, I'll be honest, Heath, that's when we're going to be looking to the folks like you to solve for the ginormous amount of white space that we will have. Because while HubSpot does and will continue to build integrations, can we build everything that every single customer needs? Absolutely not. And so that's when I think we're going to be tapping on your shoulders in a pretty big way and other folks in the space because uh, we want to make every single person in your firm as efficient as possible. Yeah. Uh, and that that entails having a very tight tech stack and we're not going to build absolutely everything. So integrations are the route. And frankly, I think for a good portion of that landscape, we're going to be leaning on folks like you all to awesome. fill the white space that we won't be filling. Awesome. Awesome. Well, let me ask uh, along those lines, um, you know, uh, commercial, we do integrate data between ERPs. I mean, everything from QuickBooks up to SAP and CRMs like HubSpot, but we also do commerce, um, e-commerce, you name it, we support it. Um, some of the more popular ones like Adobe used to be, uh, Adobe Commerce used to be Magento, but let me ask a specific question. And I think this really ties into what you were saying. You want to make the sales team more efficient. And between the CRM and, and the HubSpot, uh, the Commerce Hub, so the HubSpot CRM and the HubSpot Commerce Hub, you're helping that. But I like what you said where we're not going to upset the back office and suddenly make them change what they're doing. You're just going to help make it easier. So I think where I, what I'm getting at as far as commercial sync goes, those payments come in. All right, great. We know that we can start working on that machine for, for our B2B customer. But the accounting team needs to know, hey, you know, this payment came in. Who did it come from? What's happening? And that goes into the ERP. How does that payment get in there? And I'm kind of giving <laughs> kind of a leading answer here. But as far as like with commercial sync goes, getting that kind of data from Commerce Hub into the accounting software, the ERP, so the back office can get their jobs done, obviously more efficient. I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about that. Yeah. So I do think in a lot of ways, it will probably be an API side solution, Heath, because, um, you know, let me know if you think I'm wrong here, as you're definitely in the ERP space, frankly, in a little bit, you know, deeper way than I am, just to be completely transparent. Yeah. Um, I don't think any two companies have the exact same needs on this front. Mm -hmm. Actually, I'm curious what you think on this, if you don't mind, if I kind of turn this back on you. Sure. Do you think, are there like similar needs that every single company has from an ERP perspective? Because to me, they're That's all pretty question. custom, which yeah. makes it pretty darn hard for my team to build something that everyone is happy with. What's yeah. your take? So my take is, you know, I, I, I've talked to a lot of customers over the years, easily over 200 over the last uh, five, six years. And everybody who is using an ERP or even just kind of a more robust like QuickBooks desktop software, they are using it very similar with the invoicing, AR, all that stuff, payroll and everything. But some of them are managing very, very specific things. Um, 
for example, they're managing all the supplies. So, uh, and the price levels, they're managing all that. So we need to integrate that to the CRM. So like in HubSpot, they can build a quote because, you know, you may call me, Mr. Business to business here. I may want the machine to be a certain way that I'm going to then sell to my customers, or maybe I use it to build whatever and compared to somebody else. So that's a almost different use case for an ERP um, because th they're managing so many different things with a company doing service. Like I had mentioned earlier, maybe that's just, that's all they do is third party computer networking service specific to like maybe the tri-county tri-city area in any given uh, country or state. Um, they are, they're going to use it obviously the same, but also different, you know, and, um, and then we're going to move that data over that, that their sales team needs, not necessarily parts and all that, maybe a little bit if they're replacing, you know, certain computer parts, but they're going to want to be able to manage, you know, hours of, of service, uh, warranties, et cetera. A lot of that stuff can live on two different systems. So we bring that together. Um, but yeah, I would definitely say there's a lot of similarities and a lot of differences. I mean, we have customers that are in, in the pharmaceutical industry where their ERP has to manage stuff related to the FDA stuff. And, and none of this is private. It's all like you, you learn about this when you're, you're shopping for an ERP and you find out, wow, this one can manage that stuff so much more because there are certain ingredients that not just the finished product they have to they have to keep track of of what's happening with sp specific products or even food manufacturers we have a few food manufacturers and their erp manu covers that and then their crm covers maybe the grocery stores that they sell to um, maybe they have an e-commerce platform because they want to do a little bit of b2c sales and, and whatnot and we can at least get all of that into hubspot crm or on the other side of the coin, when purchases are made, we can get that back over. So the accounting team can, can do, can do what they need to do, you know, payroll, uh, make sure that this customer paid. I can't tell you, I don't want to dive too deep, but I can't tell you how many customers tell me that their accounting team also sp spends time chasing payments because of the check situation. Yeah. I didn't know it was 40%, but, you know, I don't want to get too, too down that rabbit hole, but you know, that's, that's kind of those efficiencies and everything like that. I'm glad that we have a pretty similar read on this space that is pretty. It's complex, broad. Complex. I, broad, I think is a safe adjective to use here. I guess to, to finally answer your question, I think that HubSpot will continue to cover the table stakes things that are similar across all businesses. So moving that invoice into your system with an open status and then closing that invoice out when it's paid mm. within HubSpot, making yeah. sure your invoice numbers are in sync, making sure those line items, so those products within HubSpot efficiently sync over to what your ERP system. So I think we're going to take care of the things that every single business using it would need. When it comes to all of the nuances on that front, though, I really do think we're going to be leaning on folks like you. Mm -hmm. Taking a step back, the partner network of HubSpot has been an unbelievably significant part of our business. Yeah. And for so long, like when I started at HubSpot, we just had marketing agencies. That's pretty pretty much it. But over yeah. the past you know five, seven years, I'd say, maybe even longer, um, we're now seeing a lot of CRM implementation firms, a lot of folks who create integrations like you. So our partner network has changed from marketing agencies to mm. much more broad, like integrators and implementers. And I think that I think and I hope the next iteration is really like completely commerce centric on all fronts where you're running you know, marketing sales, getting paid, closing out those books, making sure those customers are super happy, making sure your accounting team is super happy. So I do hope that Commerce Hub can help uh, our, our partner network change, which it will continue to change without a doubt. But I do hope and think that that will be like chapter three of our partner network specifically. Awesome. 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 That's, that's really awesome to hear. Um, now kind of diving back, um, 
into Commerce Hub and, and marketing. And I understand it is a little bit different from other hubs. And I was wondering, you know, as a fellow marketer, uh, how will you be marketing uh, Commerce Hub and, and selling it without a sales team? And you had mentioned earlier, if divorce attorneys are, are putting, you know, ways to hire without having to do any kind of customer facing or sales salesperson facing, you know, how will you do that? I, and how will you gauge the success? Um, I, I think this is really fascinating. Uh, me too, by the way, and I'm in it all. <laughs> so I'm happy to say, I also think it's really fascinating. So you put your finger on something pretty significant there, Heath, when it comes to uh, the comment that I made around divorce lawyers and the fact that we don't have our sales reps selling these tools every day. Mm -hmm. Hub is HubSpot's first, what, what we call in the market in general, we'll call a product-led growth motion. And so this is something that I think about all day, every day, probably a little bit too much. And we're still a work in progress. Frankly, I think we're going to be a work in progress forever, because if you ever stop, then I guess you're probably not progressing at all. Yeah, but I agree. We're, yeah. And so we always will, but I do think we... Um, we're learning every day and we're pivoting every week. I'll tie back to that pivot comment in a second here. What we're all about is allowing for you to discover these tools in the app, learn without speaking to anyone how they can help you, adopt the tools as easily as possible and understand how it fits with the rest of the HubSpot platform and then grow with those tools. And so that's frankly hard. We're still figuring it out and we are making changes all the time, time back to what I just mentioned earlier. So what does that look like? We have a Wednesday meeting every single week where we do a deep dive into all of the data that we're seeing. And my role in this is I'll often bring the qualitative feedback. So as I mentioned earlier, I'm talking to customers all the time. My team is talking to customers all day, every single day. And so I think we have a really productive and healthy motion where we have our analysts who do a deep dive and say, where are people clicking in the app? How are people learning about this tool? Are people learning about the new tools that we have? And then I'll bring to the table, well, here's what I'm hearing from other HubSpotters. Here's what our customers are saying. Here's what our partners are saying. And so I think we've done a pretty darn good job of taking the quantitative analysis that we bring to the table, plus the qualitative analysis that we're also seeing. And then from there, we're like, okay, we're just going to make this decision to change this. We're going to watch it for two weeks. And if it works, we're going to lean into it more. If it doesn't, we're going to ax it. And tying back to my comment earlier around like my role at HubSpot over the years of just being on these experimental teams, yeah. I think that that's the motion that over time brings the tide up and raises every single boat. And so it's hard. It's hard for any company trying to really lean into product leg growth. I think marrying quantitative and qualitative analysis and being not only not afraid to pivot, but eager to pivot and continue mm. to learn. It's huge. And I guess that ties back to my comment earlier around like, I think I'm a curious person. If you can just carry forward that curiosity and be like, you know what? It seems like this is something that's bubbling up a lot. Here's how I think we could address it. Can we just give it a try? And if it works, great. And if it doesn't, we'll torpedo the idea. I think that that's the motion that for a product led go to market motion, but frankly, any go to market motion is very healthy. Awesome. That's, that's incredible. Um, but but I got to ask, I mean, and I think you kind of listed some of them. And I, I love the idea of being willing and able and enthusiastic to pivot. Um, I think sometimes companies, whether they're too big or or maybe uh, just afraid to pivot, um, which could mean they're stuck on a plateau or, you know, falling the other way, it. it it almost becomes like a, 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 I had a friend in the Navy, the aircraft carrier trying to turn We got to turn around. It's going to take a long time to turn that ship around. Whereas if you're agile enough and, and you're willing and there's the support, you can more like a car. Let's just make a, make a little turn here, maybe make a little U-turn and go back in the other direction. So I, I think that's incredible. But what have been some of the challenges you've experienced when basically spreading the word about all these great new features in Commerce Hub? Yep. So one thing that I think is very important is to always keep the persona that you're serving in mind. Mm -hmm. So when I started at HubSpot, 
uh, we were still a marketing company trying to figure out how to become a CRM company, which I think we've done successfully. Mm -hmm. And every single company meeting, the words marketing Mary were used at least 10,000 times. And so it was very clear, like we are solving for marketing Mary. And then we've had a number of other personas. And I think we've been very disciplined as a company around like, no, we are not going to be building that because this is the persona that we're serving. Mm -hmm. And so I think just to be transparent, one of the headwinds that we've faced is we really know how to speak to a marketer. We really know how to speak to oh, a yeah. sales leader or a customer success leader. We mm -hmm. also have the benefit of those folks spending most of their day working within HubSpot. However, these accountants and this finance persona, they're often not in HubSpot at all. Frankly, their only familiarity with HubSpot is often a line item on the balance sheet that they see on, the, on their P&L. And mm -hmm. so um, we're still, as a company, really working through, like, how do we reach who I've deemed Accountant Annie as much as possible, mm -hmm. especially considering that Accountant Annie doesn't live within HubSpot the way right. Marketing Mary does or Sales yeah. Leader Steve. Let me uh, let me let me ask you this question. Um, what is next for Commerce Hub and HubSpot? I mean, I know you just announced it, and maybe I'm jumping jumping ahead a little bit, but but specifically, what is next for for Commerce Hub as you continue to to grow it? Yeah, I'll give you all some roadmap insights here, uh, and folks, if you all do want more. Uh, feel free to reach out to me directly via LinkedIn because I'd first of all love to chat, uh, but I'd also love your take on how we're thinking about everything as well uh, awesome. because it gets feedback really is the breakfast of champions here. And so I really would love to hear from you folks. Um, so one of the things that we're working on uh, right now is milestone billing. So essentially like 50% down today, 25% halfway through the project and 25% at the very end. Mm -hmm. We can do that right now. But the reporting and automation around that is going to get a lot better in the next couple of months. I mentioned accounting integrations. We absolutely have accounting integrations right now. We're going to very much double down on that over the next couple of quarters as well and continue to push in that space. Our planning season is still coming together, so subject to change. It really does look like the, the commerce APIs are something that I'm hearing a lot about, the rest of the team is hearing a lot about. And so as we continue to grow this product, I think that's the direction that we're likely going to be going in. And so, Keith, I think we're probably going to talk a good amount next year. Yeah. Which I'm looking forward to. And yeah. then where could this lead? Who knows? Financial technology, I feel like, is one of those spaces in the economy that is changing faster than any other space. And so mm. as we look forward five years, we see like a hundred interesting options on the table. There are probably 500 that we don't see and another 500 that like may not even exist right now. And so <sighs> that's why I made that comment earlier on like first or second inning for Commerce Hub, like yeah. the world of financial services, for example, like what could that look like? What does mm. it look like when you have all of your data, customer and commerce together in a world of Moore's law where mm. computers continue to get more and more powerful? Yeah. AI takes over the lifeblood of any artificial intelligence model is, of course, data. And so I don't know exactly what that's going to look like. I do know it's going to be really interesting, though. Mm -hmm. And so as long as the team will keep me, I am planning on spending the next couple of decades on this team because uh, awesome. it's really interesting and I'm really enjoying it. Awesome. And and before we wrap up, um, and I don't want to ask any like anything that would be top secret, but as we all know, HubSpot is always rolling out updates and enhancements. Um, what on the roadmap in general are you most excited about? And if you can't answer, I totally understand because I know that there's a lot of stuff that we'll find out next year and everything. But what 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 has you the most excited? I'm really excited about us being able to hold hands with back office systems in a more efficient way. Like we we have the ability to do so now, uh, but I'd be the I'd be the first to recognize that we have more room to grow there. So that I'm really excited about. More than anything though, Heath, and maybe this is like the bleeding heart in me to a degree, we are seeing that folks who do use our tools really are growing their business. And 
uh, I've been at this company for a long time and I believe in the mission as much as I always have. Like we really are helping businesses grow, helping them hire more people. And so it's been really nice to see just like the growth of the folks who are using our tools, not just for like our bottom line metrics by any means, but like their bottom lines. Mm -hmm. And so while, yes, I'm excited about a tighter connection between us and back office systems, the thing that I'm most excited about, though, is helping businesses grow more efficiently. There's something very virtuous in that. And uh, I think that the rest of HubSpot is still very much on that mission. I certainly am. Awesome. And then it just kind of becomes mission. How can we develop the product to help that versus I think we mentioned earlier, let's do this, not listen to what's going on, throw it out there and hope that it doesn't die on the vine, so to speak. So awesome. got to speak to your customers. Got to speak yeah. to your customers. That's, yeah. I think, absolutely gigantic. Uh, absolutely. Uh, Jack, really appreciated this conversation. How can people learn more about you and, and reach out to you? You'd mentioned LinkedIn. Connect with me on LinkedIn. Check out all of the Commerce Hub pages that we have on HubSpot.com. If you are a HubSpot user, Go ahead and like check it out. I really do think you can read as much as you would like, but ultimately running a test transaction, seeing how the data is represented, seeing the money pop up in your bank account. I'd really encourage you all to roll up your sleeves and get started. As I mentioned, it's a product led growth motion. And so you all should totally be able to get up and running pretty easily. So connect with me on LinkedIn, give it a try as well. And then connect with me on LinkedIn and let me know what you think, actually. It would be my push. Um, awesome. So learn more, connect with me. I'd love to hear from you all. Uh, and my hope is that these tools can help your organization grow. Awesome. Thank you so much. And everybody, Jack Coopersmith on LinkedIn. Jack, thank you again for your time today. Have a great one. Thank you so much, Heath. This has been awesome. Really appreciate you and the rest of the team and looking forward to continuing to work with y'all. Same. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in to Syncast Powered by Commercial. Learn more about ERP and CRM integration with Commercial Sync by logging onto commercial.com.